Okay, it's about 10 minutes of 10 and I'm going to get started right at 10 o'clock. I'm going to put myself on mute for now.
Okay, I'm going to get started now. Welcome to the second showing of the January customer webinar. My name is Rose and I'm part of the marketing team here at Dimensional Insight. Today I'm going to be talking to you about design. I'm going to cover some key considerations about design and at the end of my presentation there will be links to more information. We'll send an email out after this webinar is over asking for your feedback to the overall presentation. Once you complete the short feedback survey, you will be able to download a copy of this presentation. That's probably the easiest way to get access to the links in this presentation. Customers attending this webinar may be using version 6.4 or 7.0 of Diveport. 6.4 uses the classic environment. 7.0 has both the classic environment and the new simplified user interface. Dashboard designers working in both environments will find a use for thinking about these key considerations. The most important key consideration is your audience. Do you know what they need in a dashboard? Our audience is the business person. The needs in business are very different than the needs in entertainment. Your specific customer may be only your boss. His requirements for the dashboard should be taken into account. And there are also the requirements of specific industries to take into consideration. One industry is very different from another. But for all dashboard designs, Regardless of audience or industry, there are some basic concepts that will hold true for everyone. And starting with the most important consideration that I have already mentioned, your audience, you can start to build a very useful dashboard. The entire process flows like the shape of a funnel. You're going to start with lots of information and hone all of it down to only what is needed. People sometimes confuse design with style. Design principles don't change, yet style is changing constantly. And the choice of style is a personal one. Take these shoes, for example. Your audience may have a preference for one style over another. Their preference may differ from what you prefer. My advice is to have a conversation about style early in your process. Ask questions about style in your survey of stakeholders. Get agreement about the direction of your style before you begin any work. Get the agreement in writing. Say, these are the style parameters that we will work within. And then list the font names, color codes, style descriptions like conservative, and layout components that are agreed upon, and have everyone sign the document like a contract. If you do not use this method, disagreements about style can eat up a lot of valuable time. If disagreements arise, go back to the agreed upon style document and point out that you have adhered to the agreed upon style. Once you've surveyed your users and gathered all the content you'll need, you need to make some decisions about layout. Here's some content that might go on a sales manager's dashboard. If everything has equal importance to the end user, the dashboard might look like this. But when we know that sales by product is the most important thing to the audience, we make it larger and display it in the upper left-hand corner of the page. Essentially, you're using higher contrast to differentiate the sales by product portlet from other portlets on the page. The highest contrast on a page will always receive the most attention. Other forms of contrast you could use instead of size and position are shape, hue, saturation, and value. To contrast shape, 
you might have the most important item displayed within a circle instead of all the other rectangles. For hue contrast, if all of your portlets exude a gray feeling, use a blue or yellow background behind the most important item. You're probably starting to get the picture. So you could contrast saturation or value too. Saturation is the intensity of the hue. Value refers to lightness and darkness of a hue. You might wonder just how many portlets you should display on a dashboard. It depends on your audience. Airplane pilots have hours and hours of training and need to know all of the information displayed on their dashboard to get their jobs done. Are your analysts used to looking at this many pieces of data all at once? Is this amount of data even needed for them to do their jobs? When there's a lot of data to communicate, one has to wonder if the audience will be able to effectively use all of it. Just like the expression, you can only eat an elephant one bite at a time, data displayed on a dashboard must be processed by the end user in order to turn that data into meaningful information. Good dashboard design makes it easier for the audience to see and process the data they're seeing. So how much data should you display on a dashboard? You might want to try using Miller's Law. Miller's Law states that humans can only process between five and nine pieces of data in short-term memory. In other words, seven plus or minus two is the ideal amount of stuff to display. When there are more than nine pieces of data, use chunking to facilitate use of the data in short-term memory. Here's an example of visually chunking. And this is another example of chunking. How do you go about chunking portlets on a dashboard? You might want to think about it like an exercise in fashion. Just as Glamour Magazine advises women not to combine too many conflicting patterns and shapes in one outfit, I advise not to combine too many different sizes and shapes on one dashboard. If you have a lot of similar shapes, chunk them together. A refrigerator can be a sort of dashboard. In an emergency, one might leave a note on the fridge. But if the surface is cluttered and too busy, that note will never be noticed. Don't clutter your dashboards. You've got to act like a filter. What is the minimum amount of data needed for the user to get their job done? If you have a power user, that number might be 42. So chunk the 42 items into five to nine smaller areas. When you survey your users, you may also want to find out if they have any physiological limitations that would be important to know as you design the dashboard. For instance, some people have trouble distinguishing levels of gray in low light. For these people, muted colors are nearly impossible to tell apart. You should also survey users about their technical backgrounds. As you act like a filter, you'll be keeping the needs of the user at the forefront of your key considerations. You can then start your first dashboard, get feedback, revise, and repeat until you have the audience's ideal dashboard. It's all about leveraging the fundamentals of design to lead the audience to see what is most important to see. I'm not going to go into detail about all of these resources. However, once you receive the PDF of this presentation, you'll have access to more information about fonts and colors to help you with your dashboard designs. For now, I want to give you a sneak peek at what we've been doing with Divers user interface. Our 
Auto Parts demo showcases the look and feel available with version 6.4 of Diver and Diveport. Although there is nothing wrong with these styles, we wanted our version 7.0 of Diver to have a fresh look and feel. Here is the look of one of our latest products, DiveTab. With DiveTab, we wanted to provide a simple and consistent user experience for our customers. The iconic user interface element of DiveTab is the menu page that you see here on the left. The menu has large banners on top and buttons with big icons. You can click on one of the buttons to view reports or presentations on the full screen. DiveTab is super easy to use. Because the look and feel of DiveTab was so popular, we decided to bring the DiveTab design principles into DivePort. You can see the result of integrating these design principles in the new look and feel of our healthcare demo. Two major user interface changes have been implemented in this demo. The simplified user interface and the skyline skin. The simplified user interface brings the same navigation system from DiveTab to DivePort. And the Skyline skin was the skin we developed for our product, Teamer. These two changes made the DivePort display look cleaner, even though there are many things on a single page. This resulted ultimately in an application that is easier to use. This year, we continue pushing the goal of modernizing and simplifying, not just DivePort, but the whole DI product line. Our goal is to create a more consistent, consistent user experience. Since new design is not just for DivePort, we have selected four essential user interface elements to start with. The reason we chose them is because almost all products have these user interface elements. They are the login, menu, dashboard, and reports. Let's look at each of these new designs individually. First, we have the login page. This is the new design. You can see that no matter what platform or device you are using, the user experience is the same. You see the same look and feel even though you may be using DivePort or DiveTab. Here's a closer look at the login page. The most important thing on a login page is entering one's username and password to get into the system. So we put them in the center with high color contrast and make them the first thing the users will see on a login page. The background and the title are customizable so you can let users know what application they are using. Next, here is our new menu page. In our design, all menu pages will have a large banner on top, no matter whether we're looking at DivePort or Dive Tab. Due to space limitations, the mobile phone interface employs a vertical menu instead of the big rectangle buttons. Here is a closer look at the new menu page. The top banner is bigger, so displaying a nice picture is possible. The navigation bar is also a bit taller than before with a white background. The page background color changed from gray to light blue. Buttons are now borderless and now have a shadow effect. All of these changes make the menu page look cleaner and more dynamic. Here is an example of our new DivePort dashboards. In this new design, we have higher banners and navigation bars to increase the white space balance for the whole page. It has the same background color as the menu page, light blue. And you can see these white boxes are all over the page. The combination of the light blue background and white boxes make the page look cleaner and helps users focus on the content, which are the numbers and the charts. In the past, we used lines to separate different content on the dashboard. Now, we're using these white boxes. Here is another example of the dashboard 
with a new design. And another example. Again, this design really focuses on emphasizing the story the dashboard is telling. And we can reuse components like this in other dashboards. Components like this allow users to see all the key measures on the left with good or bad indicators. Details and trends are shown on the right. Here is the new design of a report page. It has the same look and feel as dive port and dive tab. Here's a closer look at the report example. We see the same blue background on a white box with flat visual elements in the white box. We've increased the space between columns and rows. There are brighter colors creating a cleaner and more professional look. And finally, here is another example of our new reports with charts. Let's review the resources that you can use on your own after this presentation is over. As I said before, attendees will be able to get a copy of this presentation after it is over, so there is no need to write notes at this time. In this presentation, I mentioned several times that you should interview your users prior to building your dashboard. Some of our customers have a handful of users. Some have thousands. When you have a lot of users to survey, it may be useful to use a tool like SurveyMonkey. It's easy to use and free to get started. There are many questions you'll need to ask your users. Here are a few to help you start thinking about what to ask. I've written several blog articles on our website's blog that focus on certain aspects of dashboard design. This article addresses the issue of selecting the right type of chart to accurately display user data. This article shows how to use Google Analytics to uncover your users most commonly used screen dimensions. And of course, when you build your dashboard, you'll want to use the most commonly used screen dimensions. This article shows how to create the modern feel of a simple flat design. If you're having trouble deciding on a good color combination for your environment, this article shows you how you can leverage your company's corporate colors, which can improve user adoption rates. Color can be fun or frustrating. This tool found in this article makes color fun. You may not realize that some of your users are colorblind. If they are, you should follow the instructions in this article to accommodate their needs. Finding high quality, low cost imagery is not a problem when you go to this website. You may recall that the new menu page uses images on every button, so you might need a few images that are unique to your own company. This article shows how to implement a feedback loop so that you can continue to learn what is working and what is not working on your dashboards. Another way to gather user information is to use an information sharing tool like Teamer. That's what I use in our office. And if you go to none of the other resources referenced in this presentation, you should at least go to this resource and sign up for our blog. That's where all of the articles I wrote live, and by signing up for the blog, you'll be notified of my future articles, as well as the very, very valuable articles written by other staff here at Dimensional Insight. Just go to the website and click on the word blog in the upper right-hand corner of the screen. On the first page of the blog, there's two columns, and the right-hand column has a box where you can subscribe to the blog via email. If you'd like to learn more, 
information about how to adjust colors and fonts in a portlet for version 6.4 can be found in the user manual that is available on our customer website. Just go to our customer, excuse me, just go to our website and click on sign in in the upper right hand corner of the screen. This takes you to the sign in page where you can click the link to sign in to either the customer site or partner and distributor site. You will need a password to log into these sites. If you do not have a password, contact support at support at dimmins.com. Once you log in on the customer or partner site homepage, click the link for downloads. On the downloads page, shown here with a huge gray box blocking my own personal information, there is a manual column on the far right hand side of the page. This is where you will find the 6.4 manual. Information about how to adjust the colors and fonts in a portlet for version 7.0 can be found in online help that is bundled with the software. If you would like even more help, you can sign up for our class on dashboard design through our training department. It is excellent. The best way to sign up is to contact support at the email address shown here. Okay, that's the end of my presentation. As I had written in the chat box, I would like you to enter your questions in the chat box or if you have not done so already, you can email questions to me. Just send them to rose at dimmins.com. Thanks for attending and look for that email follow-up that will be coming in the next week. Have a great day.